Hello everyone, thank you for watching this video. Um, in this video, I am going to demonstrate what we have learned so far with respect to the Azure AD service and um, how we can project yourself as an Azure, admis Azure AD administrator and what are the key tasks that you get on day-to-day -day basis and how you handle them. Okay, so to get started with, we started talking about the Azure AD uh, what is Azure AD and how it is going to help us? Um, if I just summarize that, Azure AD is a cloud-based identity and access management solution, which takes care of authentication, authorization of the cloud-based applications. It can be your Office 365 or Microsoft 365 applications. It can be Azure subscriptions. It can be any enterprise application that you integrated with your Azure AD, or it can be your on-premises corporate applications that integrate with the Azure AD. So Azure AD uh, will also, um, you know, uh, help in uh, providing the automation of user provisioning from any application that uh, is integrated with Azure AD or maybe on-premises, uh, you know, uh, applications as well. Let's say example, HR based application. When there's a new employee join your organization, so the HR system like, you know, application like Workday or any other, any other HR application that actually gets uh, updated with the new user information and that will be internally uh, created in AD as well, Active Directory, and that will in turn synchronize to Azure AD. And same thing, if you don't want to, uh, you know, use the on-premises based uh, uh, HR based system applications, if you want to use the cloud based uh, HR applications, then, you know, the uh, Workday or any other HR applications can be integrated directly with Azure AD. So in this case, when there is a new user account created in the HR application, so that will automatically sync to Azure AD and it will be created in the Azure AD. So it has many other capabilities where, where it can integrate with the other applications and uh, help in auto provisioning of user accounts, auto deprovisioning of user accounts as well. In case if you enable mail or email properties in Azure AD level, they can be written back to the uh, HR system or HR applications. So that is the capabilities you have with Azure AD. So it has almost all the capabilities of your on-premise AD, except the Kerberos and group policies that also can be achievable with the Azure AD domain services. Adding to that, with Azure AD, you can also start managing the um, user accounts that are created in on-prem AD. You can reset that password in Azure AD itself, and you know those passwords can be synchronous back to the uh, on-prem AD. You can also, uh, you know, create groups uh, or modify the groups information on Azure AD. Um, so, adding to this, um, you know, the users, whether they are cloud-based users or they are other business users or on-premise AD users, the Azure AD gives an opportunity to assign permissions to any type of users. So if you are IT administrator, you have been managing the Active Directory and users, groups and application related activity things. Now you are going to manage the Azure AD and uh, you have all the capabilities, almost all the capabilities like I just explained. Um, you should be able to add users, groups, and uh, you should be able to uh, add applications. Um, you can audit these users sign in methods. Let's say who you, who logged in and uh, you know, if there are any unauthorized access has been identified, you can get alerts and uh, all the security part uh, and uh, monitoring part, everything can be managed within the Azure AD. So that's a uh, beauty of Azure AD. And um, yeah, so the, the permissions, if I talk about it, you know, you have an on-premise domain administrators, enterprise administrators, uh, you have a schema administrators, you have different uh, uh, permissions you have in on AD, and similarly you have an Azure AD global administrator, which we call as GA. And if you want to manage the application only, you have application administrator. If you want to manage only users, you have a user administrator. Likewise, you know, based on your requirement, you can actually have your, uh, uh, have the roles assigned to the users. And uh, if you want to have the customize these roles, when that is also available with 
within Azure AD. And each and every role that you assign, that can also be added to the PIM. So with the privileged entity management, you can control who is who need to have access to privileged roles and how long they need to have access. You can also audit when they uh, sign up or activate this privileged entity roles. When they try to use the privileged role, you can also audit what is the purpose they have used it. So those kind of controls you have with the Azure AD. So you, whatever, the, almost all the controls what you have in on-prem AD, you have it here as well, except the the authentication protocols, you know, other capabilities of core identity and on-premises is not exist on Azure AD, and that is still can be possible with the Azure AD domain services, okay? The users who are visible in Azure AD can also be visible in M365 and um, Office 365 con administ admin consoles, and they can be granted access to it. Even SharePoint also, they can be visible. And if, if I talk about Azure subscriptions, even on the subscription also, they will be able to visible. Okay, which means the users can be granted access to all these online applications, as well as the applications that are integrated with the Azure Active Directory. So we also talk, talked about the Azure subscriptions and its permissions. What is the management group and what is the Azure subscription? What are the resource groups and resources? How the permissions are inherited? What are the custom roles? What are the built-in roles? What are the service specific roles? How we can assign? So that is what even we have covered in the uh, last couple of sessions. In case if you want to start learning about Azure AD further and you know try to understand what are the different use cases, you can follow this documentation uh, from here. I'm going to share that with you. So let's start with the Azure AD. What is Azure Active Directory? Who uses Azure AD? And uh, what are the Azure AD licenses you have? And uh, which features works in Azure AD? So many options you have it and what are the terminologies? If you are new to the Azure environment, if you wanted to understand the terminology and its description, this is the place we have to get started. And once you have a good understanding about this, you can learn how to create an Azure AD directory or tenant. So you sign up, sign in with your organization account to portal.azure.com. You can just click on uh, create tenant then that's where you are going to provision your own tenant or a directory. Then later you are going to add uh, other resources like user accounts or groups or whatever it is. If you want to have a custom domain verification done, you can go to Azure AD and uh, add a custom domain. And uh, you you just need to follow these options. It will validate the domain and uh, give you a domain verified. Later, once you activate your custom domain and uh, once you activate your uh, Azure AD. If you want to add subscription to your directory, you can follow these steps. So once you have your, uh, you know, subscription activated, if you want to add any privacy information um, into your directory so that when users logged in, they can just, uh, you know, accept the terms and conditions and, you know, um, who can, um, I mean, who who is the point of contact in case if there is an information required that information can be updated here in case if you want to add a company branding so basically when you log into any microsoft uh, portals so you will see microsoft logos and uh, microsoft information so these all can be uh, modified with the custom branding you can go to azure ad and the uh, um, upload your uh, company images and you know modify the banner logos so which will uh, eventually give you uh, your users a good experience as your company right so that's experience you can see and you can modify it from the custom branding uh, page later once you and setting up your organization like this then you start provisioning the user accounts if you want to understand how what are the, how do you assign the users? How do you manage it? So you can go to the manage users, click on assign roles to users, 
manage groups, manage licenses. So this is how you start. It's like basic Azure AD administration. So if you really want to learn Azure AD, it's like an ocean, I would say. There are plenty of use cases, business use cases, application specific use cases. But as Azure AD admin or an Azure administrator, these are the basics that you should be aware of, get started with it. So as in when you start doing it, start implementing it, you will come across different situation scenarios. Then with a little bit of research you will be able to handle those things okay so that's about the azure ad and how you get started uh, your learning uh, in case if you want to know more about it if you have any specific questions just do reach out to me i'm happy to uh, make a video on it or you know i'm happy to show you one to one all right so in case if somebody asks you what you have done on azure ad then you can start talking about okay um, as part of my roles and responsibilities, I am responsible for managing the identity and access management on the cloud environment. So we have Azure Active Directory tenant and uh, we do have a couple of subscription Azure subscriptions and we do have M365 purchase on our, on our organization. So we have uh, users created in the cloud that is very rare. Only few requests we have it. And um, Majority of our uh, users are coming from on-premises ID. Um, so we use Azure AD Connect tool to synchronize the user accounts from on-premises ID to Azure AD as part of my role. I take care of uh, the synchronization. The synchronization works very well without any problem in case if any user complain that they are not able to connect to any cloud applications, then they will reach out to me via ticket or sometimes they send an email to me or send uh, ping me in the Teams. Then I start connecting with the user to understand what is his user ID and email ID. I will try to check in Azure AD uh, user section to see if the user is available or not. If the user is not available, I will try to go ahead and check the Azure AD uh, connect to uh, tool and open the synchronization service to see if there are any sync failures. So I will try to ask, you know, when this user account was created, um, you know, is there any duplicate entries, uh, you know, existed. So if I look at the synchronized service logs, I'll be able to see. So I kind of you not know, troubleshoot these issues in day-to-day -day basis with respect to the Azure AD access. And a couple of users says that they are not able to reset the password. So probably they might have not assigned the proper license to do a self-service password password reset, maybe they you know they, they are not following the uh, MFA registrations or you know password reset properly. So I'll connect with the users to troubleshoot those issues. And sometimes users complain that they're not, they're not able to access the application. So I check the application and you know see whether user having assigned access or not to the application. And sometimes you know I I try to add users to MFA and add some exclusions if needed. We have Azure AD condition access policies, you know. I will also review the policy from which location user is trying to access. So most of the times when user is uh, saying that he is not able to connect to any Microsoft Azure uh, online services or an online applications, then what I generally do is I will try to go to sign in logs of that user to see um, is the user account as uh, trying to sign in, is there any reason for the Values. So those kind of things I do uh, check it out and um, on a you know every weekly uh, we do I do a you know audit on to see if there are any an enormous uh, authentications are happening or you know is it a failure so those kind of sign in uh, risky sign ins I will validate and uh, review with our technical lead or you know team members to see is it a legitimate logins or is there anything that we identified wrong so those kind of reviews I do from on a weekly basis so that's part of my you know day to day jobs roles and responsibilities. Sometimes I do get a request to terminate the user accounts. I ensure that the user account is uh, properly removed and Azure AD and its access has been removed. So we have a termination process where we get approvals and uh, I try to uh, follow those, uh, you know, procedures and uh, terminate the user account and its access. I get a request to group, create a groups and assign the users to the groups. This kind of day-to-day uh, uh, -day, uh, request I get, 
and I try to automate as, as much as possible with the Azure Power, Azure AD PowerShell commands. Um, uh, you know, whenever it's required, I try to do it. And I do have access to the Azure subscriptions. I, ha I manage currently around, um, you know, five to six subscriptions and um, that includes the dev test subscriptions and uh, production subscriptions. So if any user uh, requests for the uh, access to the subscription, I, I basically, um, you know, review the request and uh, ensure that I get a proper approvals and justification. And I try to provide access to the users, whether it could be on a management group level or subscription or, you know, resource group level. So it's all depends on the user. And I'll try to create a custom rules, uh, you know, to fulfill the business requirements and to provide access to the users users so that's how this is i mean these are the couple of responsibilities but it is not limited so whenever there is a new issue coming up it's not i'm, I'm gonna take it and review with the user and try to assist him in case if it is not in my purview of scope then i i will or expertise i will try to route to the right team that's what i do on my day-to-day -day, uh, basis um, but yes, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's not only specific to Azure, it also includes Azure subscriptions and uh, sometimes M365 licensing, not able to access the mailbox. So these kind of things I, I kind of uh, uh, perform on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, so you can start explaining this to these things to them, and you know this you you get confident when you do the labs, when you understand these uh, uh, you know use cases. Uh, you know really well uh, right then you will be able to answer this to the anybody right so <clears throat> yeah so azure ready as i said it's like it has many things to do it and most of the you may not get access to do it in the enterprise but it's always better to know that you know each and every component or each and every feature from you know um, microsoft azure ready you know point of view all right thank you everybody for watching this video I know I'm covering very uh, uh, less content here. Uh, in case if you want to add more content or more questions to be answered, please do let me know. I'll try to answer as much as possible. I'll try to show them in the real time or live demos and uh, to help you guys. Thank you once again for watching. Uh, bye for now today.